The other day, I must have woke up on the wrong side of bed. Everywhere I went, these little social distancing rules were starting to get on my nerves. I was in the city and had to go to Kmart or Big W or one of those places and was met with this. Arrows marked on the floor, indicating which way to enter and exit. I honestly didn't notice and I walked in the wrong side. To be fair to me, in Australia, we usually stick to the left as we drive on the left. Also, at that time of day, there was nobody else exiting or entering, so I don't think it was such a big deal. But there was a security guard standing just inside the entrance who must have also woken up on the wrong side of bed. He piped up. Excuse me, sir, you just came in the wrong way. Sorry? You just came in the wrong way. You need to make sure you follow the arrows as directed. Oh, okay. Uh, do you want me to go back out and come back in? No, that's okay. Just make sure in the future to follow the arrows. I could have just left it there, but as I said, I woke up on the wrong side of bed. So I asked the guard, What's all this about anyway? Sorry? Why are these arrows on the floor? Oh, you know, just for coronavirus? Oh, okay. Does all this stop coronavirus, does it? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And that's the point I want to make. Nobody seems to know what this is all about. People are just going along with all these funny little rules, not really knowing if they help out or not. I know the guard is just doing his job. I know it's not his job to know why they have these rules. But will people walking into Kmart one way and walking out another way help reduce coronavirus? Once you're in the store, you can go wherever you like. There's no arrows in the store telling people where to go. The only rule they keep blurting out over the PA is to maintain a 1.5 metre distance from other people. But as I've always said, if you're in an enclosed environment like a shopping centre, does maintaining a 1.5 metre distance really help? I saw some research recently that said that 1.5 metres is much too low. Tiny coronavirus particles could travel a lot further than 1.5 metres in the air, study suggests. Australian National University researchers say particles 50 times smaller than hair can travel several metres. These invisible particles can remain in the air for hours. OK, so if the government really cared about our health, then we should probably bump this distance up to, say, 5 metres. Also, we should enforce the mandatory wearing of full-body protective suits. You might think I'm just exaggerating, but some airlines such as Air Asia are making all their cabin crew wear these sorts of suits. They were actually designed by Los Angeles-based Filipino fashion designer Pui Quinones. Perhaps we'll be seeing this pinnacle of fashion hitting the streets of Melbourne or Sydney sometime soon. By the way, what's this guy doing? Is it just me, or is this reminiscent of 1930s Germany? Hmm. Actually, I went into the shopping centre to investigate to find out what the hell they meant. On front of the centre management door was this. Please don't shake hands. Stop the spread of germs. Wash and wave. So obviously, this is meant to be somebody waving, not somebody showing their support for Nazi Germany. Actually, when I was taking this picture, I was approached by a security guard. He said to me, Excuse me, what are you doing? I'm just taking a picture of this sign here. Why? Uh, I'm just doing some research on social distancing protocols. OK, that's OK. Just make sure that you don't take any pictures of people in the centre. Yeah, no worries. Believe it or not, that wasn't the last time I was approached for taking photos. I'll talk about that soon. I'm sure you've seen these kinds of markers on the floors of shopping centres and the like. They're there to help us with the complexities of social distancing. Basically what happens, people stand on these dots when uh, lining up to go into a shop. See, these people are doing the right thing. Here's some more dots, and here's some more people doing the right thing. Hang on, what's this guy doing? Not only is he not facing the right way, he's not social distancing. Whatever you do, don't be this guy. I'm sure you've seen this kind of thing too. Benches marked with ticks and crosses indicating where you can and can't sit. If you sit in the middle seat in Australia, you'll be arrested. Here's another sofa inside a shopping centre. Zooming up on the sign here, your safety is our priority. These are priority seats for people with disabilities, seniors or pregnant women. Should only be used for a temporary time. Oh, I'm glad they said that because I was planning to move in and sit there permanently. Here's another one. This is where I almost got in trouble. An overzealous cleaner approached me and said, 
Excuse me, what are you doing? I'm just taking a picture of this sofa. You know this is private property, right? Uh, yes. Why are you taking a picture of the sofa? I'm doing some research on social distancing. You know this is private property, right? Should I not take a picture of the sofa? Let me see the picture. I was not in the mood to argue, so I just showed him the damn picture. Okay, that looks okay. Just make sure not to take any pictures of customers, yeah? Yeah, the security guard told me just before. That was basically when I decided to leave the shopping centre because a few minutes later I saw the cleaner talking with the security guard and I could just tell they were going to call the police. Is this the Australia that we've become? Taking a photo of a sofa is now seen as suspicious activity? Later on, I went to a different supermarket to buy some vegetables and I heard them over the PA talking about social distancing and how a shopping trolley is approximately 1.5 metres long. I went outside with the trolley to take this picture as I didn't want to get harassed by any more security guards or cleaners. Yes, I was carrying a tape measure just for this very purpose. As you can see here, a shopping trolley for that supermarket is approximately 95 centimetres in length. That's well short of the 150 centimetres that the supermarket were suggesting. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. You're not going to be pushing a trolley right up against somebody when you're walking, and you'll probably be holding it out at least some distance in front of you. But I'm just a stickler for numbers. It would be like saying that the 93 metre tall Statue of Liberty is approximately 150 metres tall. It's just not good science. When I was walking home, I crossed a field that had a no entry sign on it and a container where I presume hand sanitizer would be placed. I may be a stickler for numbers, but I'm not a stickler for stupid rules, so I crossed the field anyway. Unless it was covered with landmines, I think I was pretty safe. Have you seen these signs at street crossings? At the top there's a sign from the Queensland Government telling you to wash your hands, but at the bottom they're telling you to push the crossing button with your elbow. Shouldn't they be telling you to wash your elbow? I'm not joking, I tried pushing one of these buttons with my elbow and cut myself. Those edges are quite sharp. You gotta wonder, is there more chance of catching coronavirus by pressing the button with your hand or by cutting your elbow? Obviously, this is only a reenactment using tomato sauce, as I didn't think of taking a photo at the time. Normally, when I walk into shopping centres, I don't let all these little social distancing rules affect me, but the other day, I'll tell you what, every one of them was pissing me off. I walked into Coles and the first sign that I saw was this one mugs. Are we mugs for following all these rules? I don't know. Anyway, by far the most prominent rule, and therefore the most important thing you can do to prevent coronavirus, is to wash your hands. Wash your hands, 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 and wash your hands. Oh, you're still here. It turns out that if you wash your hands 100 times a day, you'll become immune to coronavirus. And that's a fact. Oops, I mispronounced that. That's f-